This is The Enthusiast for Collection DX. Today we're taking a look at the latest Soul of Shogokin release, the Dangard Ace. Now Bandai teased this figure about a year ago, so it's taken a little while for it to get to market, but I think it's uh, well worth the wait. This is actually only the second modern version of this toy. Yamato released a version a, a few years ago, and it's not bad, it's big, it's beautiful, it's heavy, it's very expensive. Uh, particularly in the secondary market. It's also a little bit more cartoony than this version. So Bandai went in a different direction with this, and, and I like that they did. It, they kind of scaled it down, made it a little bit more modest. It's a smaller scale, literally. It has less accessories. It's just uh, a little more spare. And it's a welcome difference, in my thinking, from some of the latest Soul of Shogokin stuff, which has been very expensive combiner sets that I, I just couldn't afford so I had to sit him out. So this guy's a little bit more modest and he's more affordable at uh, around $130 street price. A little bit more back to basics figure which is, uh, is welcome as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into the box. What we have here is a couple of trays of fiddly bits and accessories, as is pretty typical. And then the styrofoam coffin, which is where all the magic happens. Let's take a look at the base figure here. So, impressive right out of the box. But let's go ahead and dress him up before we get into too much detail. Now there's two helmet pieces that come in this set. One of which is a little bit more articulated and kind of unfolds as a ship that docks into a larger ship that the figure will become. And then there's a more basic helmet, which has less articulation, which I'll go ahead and put on him for now. There's also his distinctive shin guards, which have a nice glossy finish on them, which kind of pop. Okay, I'll put those on there. Also on his accessory tray, he has... Dangard the character has wings. And while his back right now is pretty clean without any kind of wing content, we can put two options on him. There's this panel that goes on, which is kind of the anime magic, uh, more tucked away wing profile, or you can put the actual wings on, which, you know, are wings, and they kind of fold away. I prefer these, so I'm going to go ahead and put these on. Let's kind of tuck into his back here. The other thing I'm going to do right now is that his chest panels here open up, and the chest panel that comes on here has these wheels which pop out, which will uh, assist in the so-called perfect transformation later on, but right now they don't need to be there, so I'm going to pop those off. And he has another panel which fits into his chest. And this has some kind of blasters or weapons that are more you know, anime accurate, but those are a little bit sleeker, so I'll pop those on for now. He also comes with uh, a handful of alternate hands, which I will not put on just for the sake of brevity, but he has open hands and fist hands. Not a ton. I mean, as you can see, there's not a ton of extra fists. Sometimes they have every hand gesture you can possibly imagine, but these are a little bit more modest. Um, he does come with one weapon. I love the fact that, you know, this release comes with a, such a small amount of accessories, because, again, I, I'm just turned off by those giant packages of accessories which drive up the price and I honestly don't use them. It's just, it's not the kind of collector I am. I, I like the piece itself. So it comes with these two um, pieces that combine to form a kind of staff or a lance. You can also form that exact same bit 
as happens, I believe, in the anime with his chin guards, which also deploy in that same way. But, you know, I like to see the actual chin guard, shin guards rather on him at the same time as the lance. So let's click on there. So I'll take this off for a second. But now let's just kind of take the opportunity to look at the figure itself, which is really great, actually. I mean, for those of you viewing, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Soul of Shogokin, but what they do is just a very beautifully made object. I mean, this, in, in all respects, in the finish, in the fit, in the articulation, in the engineering, it's just the state of the art. I mean, you're not going to get much better than this. I mean, there are some boutique companies who do better work at, you know, wildly expensive prices, but this is really just fantastic as a kind of a market product. And uh, you can't argue with anything that's going on here. So it's a really, it's a really wonderful figure. Um, the heft. Let's talk about the heft. Um, this is Gokin. And a lot of modern Gokin is kind of Gokin in name only. There's token amounts of metal here. But not in this case. This is filled with lots of metal. Um, just the stuff that I'm aware of from, you know, tactily. We have the shoulder panels. These are metal. These um, upper chest pieces here on his shoulders are metal. Um, there might be some in, uh, not exposed in, in the torso. These upper thighs are metal. The thigh joints, there's a lot of die cast. There's kind of these big chunks of die cast in here, which are really great. So the thighs, there's knees here. His top of his torso just fell off, which tends to happen sometimes. These knee pieces are metal. His feet are metal. On the back, in these panels, these um, folding knee back of knee panels are metal. Once you fold this into uh, spaceship mode, you'll see that these fins here are metal. And I think there might even be concealed metal in the hips or in the torso or somewhere in this figure just because it, it does have so much heft in your hand. So uh, it, it's a really solid piece. I mean, it's definitely worthy of being called Shogokin. It has a similar kind of hand feel as your classic Popey DX stuff. So, I mean, you just notice that it's just a beautiful figure. Let me take a look at articulation. The head is on a ball joint. Nothing unusual there. The shoulders are on the kind of a ball joint, and then the... the pin that holds it in is, is, oops, is um, metal. Um, the, the elbow bends in a double joint, so it bends kind of deep. The hand bends here, but that's more for the ultimate uh, transformation. There is a waist joint, but it's, as you can see, not terrific. It's just kind of a few degrees there, nothing too wonderful. The hips splay out really wide, which is kind of cool. There's that double hip joint, interior hip joint. The thighs, see what I mean about that thing popping out? Bend about, you know, 90 degrees, a little bit less than 90 degrees. But then the knee has a really tight collapsible, so it collapses here. It's a really tight, collapsible joint, so that's pretty nice. I mean, and you can see that this is the benefit of metal, is that you can bend that guy's knee, and he is solid. I mean, that's not going anywhere. So that's pretty great. The feet, as you would want and expect, rotate all over the place, so that whenever you're setting this guy, whatever kind of pose, his feet can always be planted. You know, it's kind of an extreme pose, but his feet are still solidly on the ground, which is just a, a great feature of these things. And it, it makes the difference in terms of its uh, 
posing quality. But he's not a he's not a posing figure. I mean, he's this is more of a kind of DX presence figure. He'll pose. I mean, he he moves around and does these things. But it's that's kind of not the point. I mean, it's more it's more about his presence. I mean, he looks he looks so good doing whatever he does. Uh, one thing I want to point out is the shoulders do have an extra joint here that kind of have this huggy motion. That's, that's a nice feature. But really the, you know, from a less technical aspect, the appeal of this figure just has to be, in, in his enduring popularity as a design, just has to be due to the, the figure design. I mean, the, the composition of this figure is just impeccable. I mean, the, the proportions are really great. He, the, this kind of black and the red and the blue, I mean, it's just a beautiful design. And he's, he's really popular in America. I'm not sure that's the same in, in, in Japan. It's, it might be a reason that we haven't seen a toy of this for, you know, however many years. But he's just great. He almost has like, I feel like he has like a Batman type presence about him. That kind of black and, you know, this, this kind of heroic pose and this heroic stance. It's a good looking robot is what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So this figure itself is fantastic. It's, you know, it's beautiful. It's tactile. It's just a lovely piece. And, and you know, I can't speak highly enough about it. Um, what I will do is I'm going to go ahead and end this segment and then we can start talking about the transformation, the alt mode, because you know, it's, it's kind of unusual, in a way, for uh, late 70s super robots. He's, a, he's actually, you know, a transformer in addition to being a super robot. And a lot of your 70s era giant robots, your Mazingers, your Radines, they were kind of, I mean, Radine was kind of a transformer, but it, and I think Dangard's kind of the same way. He's kind of a transformer. It wasn't his sort of raison d'etre. It was just kind of a, a goofy anime feature. But... We'll take a lot, uh, look at that in some depth in a second.